Hey, Liam Ward here at LearnTheHarmonica.com. Today is all about tongue blocking do's and don'ts. Tongue blocking is a wonderful technique that opens up loads of doors to new sounds as a harmonica player, but you've got to do it right. If you're interested in learning all the different techniques that come with tongue blocking, then check out the link in the description to my tongue blocking course. But this video is all about things that I think you really should and shouldn't do when learning to tongue block. Make sure to stick around right to the end of the video when I'll reveal my number one mistake to avoid as a tongue blocker. But let's start at the beginning with our first one. So, number one is don't jump in at the deep end. It can be very tempting when learning to tongue block to want to do all of the awesome techniques that it gives you right from the start. Especially if you're already quite experienced as a lip purser. So one of the great things about tongue blocking is that it gives you loads of new textures. So you can play slaps. You can play flutters. You can play sweeps. Uh, octaves. There are all sorts of things that tongue blocking gives you that lip pursing won't give you. But if you try all of those straight away, then you're gonna drown. If you jump in at the deep end, it's not gonna work for you. So you've got to be patient, even though all of those textures are the reason you're learning to tongue block in the first place. Number two, relearn familiar songs. So if you have lip pursed a basic song, a nursery rhyme, whatever it is, relearn that as a tongue blocker. So you're trying to think as a beginner again and just try and get those clean, clear single notes. So one of the first tunes I ever learned was When the Saints Go Marching In. That's lip pursed. I'm on an A harp, by the way. But I would try learning that tongue blocked really, really nice and slow. And so on. And I'm trying to think as a complete beginner. I'm not trying to jump ahead. I'm not trying to do anything fancy and I'm trying to just pay attention to what I'm doing. Preferably, I'd record myself and listen back after, because that's the only way that you can truly focus in on your mistakes and learn how to get rid of those mistakes or improve your technique. Number three, don't force the air. Now this is of course relevant whether you're a tongue blocker, a lip purser, or a U blocker, but the extra complication when we are tongue blocking is that when you apply the tongue to the harmonica, you tend to have the feeling that you need to blow harder to get the air through. And because your mouth's bigger, there's more space for that air to come through. So you have a tendency to force the air more. Something about that movement onto the harmonica with the tongue means that you kind of panic and force things a little bit too much. A friend of mine has a tennis uh, training YouTube channel and I watched one of his videos recently and he talked about how when you don't have the skill level that you're aiming for, there's a tendency to tighten up. So say you're going for a big backhand and you're not used to playing backhands, then you'll tense up, all your muscles tense up and actually what you need to do is relax. And it's similar with this technique that you have a tendency to force that air, tense up and really force the air through. What happens is you don't get a sound or you get a horrible sound. And then you think there's a problem with the harmonica so you force the air even more when actually what you have to do is reverse that and relax as much as possible. And what you'll find is the note will play a lot easier once you're relaxed like that. Number four, experiment with your posture. 
So you'll sometimes see me playing kind of to the side. So in a video setting, I might be looking over here, or the harmonica might be over this side. Now, when you're learning to tongue block, you can play a straight on uh, tongue block where you're facing straight forward. But if you're aiming to play amplified and get that big fat sound, you might find that this sideways shape where you're pressing the harmonica against your tongue means that you get a tighter seal when you're playing amplified. So if you've seen me do that sometimes, that side on thing, it's a habit uh, connected to that amplified style of playing. But I would always say within reason that with these techniques it's whatever works for you. So you might find that straight on or sideways one of those works better for you and I don't want you to get uh, too obsessed with oh am I doing this right, am I doing it wrong. If the sound is good and you can achieve the techniques that you're aiming for then what you're doing is right. It is a case of if the sound is right that's okay. So try those different shapes it might be that even a tilted shape works slightly better, although I would say don't go too far either way because when it comes to bending that might complicate things. Number five, don't press your tongue hard onto the instrument. And this applies whether you are playing just single notes as a tongue locker or whether you're using other techniques, slapping and flutters. If you're kind of increasing the tension in your tongue, then that's really going to affect the sound that you're getting. So even if your breath is gentle, if you've kind of forced that heart, the, the tongue onto the harmonica, then it's going to tighten up everything that you're doing. And also, you're just going to run out of energy. So if you're playing for a few minutes to play a full song, or if you're playing a full set with your band, and your tongue is kind of forced on there, it's a waste of energy. You're going to be knackered by the end of it. So you've got to try and keep that tongue as relaxed as possible at all times. Even if it's going on and off, left and right, your mouth shape is changing, the tongue kind of is moving around. It's got to be quick, but relaxed. Number six, work on the full range of notes on the instrument. So the usual way of teaching tongue blocking is a four hole mouth shape, generally and you'd start playing melodies from hole four upwards. So when the Saints is a good example, starts on hole four blow. But you do have to consider what's happening with those lower notes, holes one to three. There are various ways of getting those with a tongue block. So you could do a narrowed shape where your mouth just gets uh, smaller and smaller. So hole three would be a three hole block, hole two, a two hole block, and then hole one, well, you might have your tongue on the edge of the instrument, but obviously not over other holes. You could actually switch or flip that tongue block for those lower notes. So you might play hole one with your tongue blocking two, three, and four, for example. Or you could actually just switch to a lip purse for the lower holes. And lots of people do that, so that's an option too. But you need to consider these things because you need to have an approach that works for the full range of the instrument. Number seven, don't soak your harmonicas, whatever someone tells you to do. Even if you see Neil Young putting his in a, a cup of, uh, you know, vodka or whatever. This isn't vodka, by the way. I don't do these videos drunk. But this is an old school thing that some people do or did. So they would soak their harmonicas and then it would help the wooden comb to be more airtight. I've got a plastic comb here, but the traditional harmonicas have a, a wooden comb. What it does in the short term is that it seals that harmonica and it makes it sound great and it's very efficient. But then when the wood dries, it can swell or crack. And this is bad no matter what mouth shape you use. But the extra thing with tongue blocking is that because your tongue's on and off the instrument, it's going to really hurt if you are kind of swiping your tongue along an instrument and there's wood, cracked wood and splintered wood coming out of the instrument. So please 
please try and keep your harmonicas nice and dry and don't soak them. Number eight, listen to the greats. So three blues harp legends known for their tongue blocking are Little Walter, Big Walter and William Clark. By listening to them you'll pick up loads of inspiration for how to use tongue blocking technique in your playing. So just a quick example, the opening lick from Duke by Little Walter sounds something like this. And he's using an octave split towards the end there. So it's a great example of how to move from single notes to octave splits. And it also starts low down on the harp. So you've got to integrate and think about those lower notes and how to use those in combination with the higher notes tongue locked. So that one line is a great place for a couple of different techniques that tongue blocking offers you. And if you listen to these guys, especially a lot of the traditional blues guys, you'll hear all sorts of things that you'll go, whoa, what was going on there? How's he doing that? It's a wonderful way to learn in a natural, organic setting. Number nine, don't feel you have to tongue lock everything. So I have this course available and there's a link uh, in the description to this video and it's all about tongue locking and the course is designed so that you try everything with a tongue lock. But that doesn't mean that you have to work towards tongue blocking completely. There are lots of uh, what I call mouth shape mongrels out there who use various different mouth shapes to achieve different techniques and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not a tongue locking evangelist. I love tongue locking, I think it's great, but I still lip purse certain things on the harmonica. So don't feel ashamed or afraid of trying to integrate tongue locking into your existing playing and maybe just use it some of the time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that and I don't want you to be put off by the idea of having to tongue lock everything. Number 10, enjoy the journey. So tongue blocking may leave you frustrated or disenchanted, especially if you've started as a lip purser and done that for several years. It can be a difficult learning curve to switch some or all of your technique across. But remember that the whole point of playing tongue blocked and the whole point of playing music is to enjoy yourself and enjoy expressing yourself. So don't get bogged down in the tiny details, especially if certain techniques don't work for you or you don't want to use them in your playing. I don't want it to become a hard line, a miserable pursuit for you. My playing is all about enjoying myself. That's what my video is about and uh, I hope that's what your playing is about. So make sure that you enjoy the journey. Just before I reveal the top mistake when learning to tongue block, if you're interested in learning some of the techniques I've talked about in this video, then check the description for a link to my tongue blocking course. It covers the basic techniques all the way through slapping, octaves, flutters, sweeps, all those different techniques in step-by-step -step lessons. So I hope you enjoy uh, finding out more about that. And please click like on this video. That means YouTube knows to share it with more people and they can see more of my videos and it really helps my channel. And finally, number 11, don't expect miracles. Tongue blocking is just a foundation, a starting point for your playing. So if you switch over to a tongue blocker, there's still a lot of other stuff you need to consider. Your musicality, your musical ear, your repertoire, your use of the techniques that you've learned. So it's not going to magically turn you into the best harmonica player ever. You're still going to have to put in the days, weeks and years that it takes to master any instrument, to master any form of music. It's not a magic wand that's going to suddenly turn you into a harmonica legend. And this is something that I've seen with student after student after student. That the ones who expect it to suddenly make them awesome actually find they're the same person they were before, they just happen to be using a different technique. Whereas, if you see tongue blocking as a tool, as a starting point, a lift-off point, for learning 
all of the magic that music and that this funny little instrument has to offer, then you're far more likely to go further with your playing. If you are interested in learning tongue blocking and all of the different cool techniques it gives you, then check out the link in the description to my tongue blocking course. It step by step takes you through all the different techniques that you'd like to learn as a tongue blocker um, and it's something that I'm really passionate about and I hope that you uh, take the course with me and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you've enjoyed this video and the tips I've given you today, then please let me know in the comments and send me your questions as well and click like on this video. That really helps my channel because YouTube knows to share the video with other people as well. If you subscribe, then you'll be first to know when I release new harmonica lessons and I do that every week, so uh, there's loads coming out. Until I see you again, good luck with your practice. I'll see you soon. Cheers.